giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Some questions from the chat, and we're going to start with a question from uh, a fellow fun host, Christine. Uh, she has a question that says, how do you produce high functioning students like Kelly and how can you make more and can you send them to Boston for college? <laughs> uh, I would say our high quality students come from past students and I'm not sure if Katie or Jishnu have anything to add, but what I've seen year after year is our, our leadership students challenge uh, incoming students uh, to a higher standard than what they were challenged to. And that really uh, raises the level for the entire student body on our team. Uh, Katie or Jishan, you have anything to add on that? Yeah, I, I agree with uh, what you said, Mike. I think it's really um, each, each level of students each year, uh, each new leadership group raising the bar just a little bit higher than the bar that they had to go to. Um, and just, not not only raising the bar, but then providing encouragement and support for the new students to uh, actually reach that bar and not just feel left in the dust is is really important. And I think each year uh, the leadership team does a pretty good job of that. All right, moving on to our next question. This one is from Shelby underscore Lamp, and they would like to know for everybody there who. Who do you main in Smash Ultimate? Okay, well, uh, we can, um, sorry, I haven't gotten to all these ahead of time. Um, uh, this one is from AidenBot360. Uh, how do you ensure team communication is active throughout the offseason and build season? This especially holds true with the technical subteams when the robot is being built and programmed. Um, so you guys kind of talked about that already a little bit, uh, but maybe especially like in the offseason, do you guys use any you know communication platforms like Slack or Discord or anything like that? Or do you just kind of keep up with each other you know regularly or how do you guys approach that yeah so everything's on slack 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 uh uh we announce off-season meetings on slack uh we do work on slack we tell people to do things on slack etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah so slack <laughs> <laughs> all right anything to add anybody else uh leadership meetings uh katie and just talked about that earlier but leadership meetings also factor in heavily to that our leadership structure is really solid and that leads to productivity as far as project in the off season. All right. Uh, next question comes from OMC 1223 and they're asking, what do you consider easy for programming languages? Uh, maybe to build off of this, you know, what programming language do you guys use? And, you know, do you see any advantages to one over another or kind of what are your thoughts on that? So we use C++. It is by no means easy. And for new teams, I really wouldn't recommend it. Uh, the reason that we use C++ is because it's fast. We get a lot of good support from 971 from, for it. And uh, <laughs> our programmers just happen to know it. And we don't really want to switch and rewrite all of our frameworks for Java, which is the alternative that I'll suggest for new teams is that Java is pretty easy to learn. It doesn't have weird behavior like C++ where you try to do something and you end up having a seg fault and you bang your head against the wall for an hour because you just don't know what's going on. <laughs> so just use Java uh, for new teams. It's easy to teach and there's tons of guides online to learn it. All right, there you go. Uh, moving on, our next question is from Schreiber MR. So I, don't, I don't know which Schreiber that is, but I think it's Mike. So what's up, Mike? Uh, 1678 is one of the larger teams. How large are each of your sub teams? Uh, how do you keep so many students busy without having idle students becoming a distraction? So I think you guys hit on this a little bit, but um, you guys want to expand on that at all? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's sort of a, a combination of what we've been nudging at throughout um, for for the numbers question, it's it's ten to twenty. Um, usually, sub teams are not much larger than twenty to twenty five students. I don't think we have a single sub team that's smaller than ten. So it's um, that that's about the range. As for keeping people um, keeping people busy and and focused, um, I mean it's it's sort of like what Mike said. It's just raising the bar. A little bit every year if if they have to keep learning and innovating there's they're not going to have time to get distracted and um be working on other things it's if we um I, I can pull a specific example from business media i can't speak for other sub teams 
Um, but this year, um, we started a grant program where we focused uh, for we like a couple of students focused very specifically on how to write grants, filling out grants, researching grants, et cetera, et cetera. That's something we hadn't done before. Uh, if we submitted for grants, it was just one student sort of it, as a one-off. Um, and this year um, sort of uh, to, not, not to give people more things to do, but that was a, uh, a nice side effect was that we had you know three or four students constantly every meeting and outside of meetings working on grants and working to perfect their language for that. All right, uh, moving on. This is, I feel like this should be an easy question for you guys to answer. Uh, Korshik1241 would like to know, lemons or avocados? Avocados. Avocados. Avocados, yeah. Wow, was, I, I feel like I'm missing something there. I was not expecting that. Uh, <laughs> any any backstory? <laughs> you guys just all like avocados. Avocados. I, <laughs> no, are, we not, are we not given the backstory? Uh, they can they can search it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. So that's thirty one thirty two. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. Uh, moving on, Zach, my dude asks, what kinds of sensors do you guys use, and what do you think of the Canifier? All right, so this year we are switching to the CAN subsystem. So most likely going to end up using the CTRE MAC encoders on most of our systems unless RC gets the MAG Mini together, which is basically a MAG encoder, but smaller, and it goes on hex. So that'll be a godsend if it does end up happening. Uh, in the case of the Canifier, uh, it's good. We used it on uh, rewiring of our competition robot to CAN, and we used the Canifier for lights, and then a proxy sensor and a Hall effect sensor. We didn't have any problems with it. We did end up ruining one by spilling solder all over it, but that was our fault, not the Canifier's fault. So. <laughs> Yeah, and then for gyro, we're using the Pigeon IMU, which works great with CAM. All right, um, so you heard it here first. Mag Encoder Mini coming from West Coast Products. If it doesn't come out, write your angry emails to RC. All right, um, <laughs> question from Shelby Lamp again. Uh, how excited are you for the Neo motor and have you had any testing with them? I don't know if you guys were a test team, but what are you guys' thoughts on the Neo? We'd love it if they shipped basically <laughs> so i guess you guys haven't tested any yet then <laughs> we have not we are ready to <laughs> test it on multiple chassis we just haven't gotten our 36 pre-orders in yet 36 all right so no wonder i haven't gotten mine because you guys are 36 all right uh moving on dragon dragonite of picnus right? uh, something, like, something like that says uh what's the best way to study for the rules test do you guys suggest the flashcards or straight reading <laughs> uh best best way to study is to read last year's rules test or last year's rules rule book like a week ahead of time and know everything in that rule book because 80 percent of the rules at least on the robot side are going to be recycled from the previous year so yeah i was i was actually year. gonna i was gonna ask you guys yeah. about that earlier when you said that you have some some leadership students kind of be the ones to actually make the the test every year do they kind of go through and just real quick figure out like what are the differences from last year's to this year's to figure out what's actually important for this year's rules, you know, compared to, you know, last year's? Is that something that factors in? Yeah, so I, I actually helped make it this on um, 2018. So we basically go through the entire manual and uh, we ask for questions that are the same across years. We do ask the same question. So there's not much time for comparison with 20, like the 20, like this year, we didn't really have time to compare it with the 2017 manual. But we do ask the same basic questions like, what's the running voltage for a battery? What's the operating pressure? Things like that. And we just get them off the manual this year. All right. Um, next question is from Versace Bot 123 uh, They say, fail faster is your motto because failing in the shop is much better than failing on the field. How do you effectively test mechanisms, autos, and in general ideas the team has without wasting too much time? I so would every, say, oh, go, you, you go, Justin, go. Yeah, sure. So there's no test that's really a waste of time, right? Like if the test fails and you learn something, if it's good, then you can check it off your list. Uh, we sp the goal is, is to spend every weekend meeting and every weekday meeting testing a mechanism. You don't like, in the case of programming, you don't want to spend a meeting writing code. You want to walk into the meeting, have a mechanism ready to go, test it, and then fix your code if the mechanism doesn't work. Uh, 
yeah, but that's about it. <laughs> All right. Anybody got anything to add? Yeah, I would just say, you know, failing, uh, failing is never a waste of time as long as it's in a methodical way. You know, if you're, if you're not learning from your failures and you're failing the same way time after time after time, maybe we can talk about wasting time. But if you're failing in new ways that you've set up tests for and you failed, that's never a waste of time because you set up the test for a reason. Maybe it's a situation you expected to see at the event. And then you failed and you realize, oh, shoot, we got to fix this before we get to the event. So I wouldn't say failing has ever been a waste of time for us. And I would say, uh, Jishnu would probably agree last year with our intake, if we had failed more often, probably we would not have had to do the last minute swap we did. But we did not fail fast enough last year. And that resulted in some, uh, some pretty rushed jobs before Utah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I think we're moving into our last question here. Uh, Rye24 Gaming is asking, uh, what are some of the methods 1678 uses to make sure the robot remains connected reliably throughout the match? I would love to hear your answer to this as well. So we actually had comms issues throughout build season. So we <laughs> we've spent time on the Einstein field not connecting to a robot. So oh. um, we do try to uh, fix up like over using bandwidth from a video camera and things like that in the shop. But past that, there's not much you can do. The FMS is a black box and the radio is something that you have to use. So it's not much you can do really. This is the sad answer. All right. Um... <laughs> Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.